I still remember the stench of burning flesh. The other crew members screaming in agony. Many of the corpses had been swallowed by the waves of salt that crashed over the floating debris we used to call our ship. While the bodies of the rest of my crew lay strewn about the smash deck, us who are still living continued to fight our unbeatable enemy. These rancid abominations appeared from the fog, and one thing was clear. Our enemies lacked even the slightest trace of any human emotions. I am haunted by these soulless creatures to this day. Every man gone to sea has heard tales of the walking dead, the ones who neither feel pain nor remorse, the vicious monsters led by a captain with no skin. But most laugh at these stories, including me and the rest of my crew. <laughs> yes, we laughed, because they are stories that sailors tell their children to keep them away from the sea. But now those very same crew members choke in their own blood from wounds not even the most skilled of mages can heal. We didn't hear them coming. There was no ship around us for miles. If there was, the lookout would have raised the alarm hours ago. Most of us were just playing card games beneath the decks, laughing, drinking, you know, the usual pirate stuff. Then everyone went quiet. I turned to look in the direction of the sound. It was one-eyed Jimmy, with a pool of blood spilling forth from his body. Then there were shouts from above, and a cacophony of clashing swords erupted, echoing across the still waters. One of the beasts ran towards me, and I decapitated it with my axe. Its head rolled along the floor and came to a stop. But I saw no eyes in its skull, only empty sockets, containing nothing but pitch darkness. Somehow I found myself far away from the battle that was raging on, while all my other crew members were either dead or fighting these undead creatures from the abyss. Water poured in beneath the hole at an alarming rate. Whatever these things were, we'd be joining them in the black waters soon enough. I remembered the children's story, and I got an idea. Locate the captain of this deceased crew and take him out. I fought my way through hordes of gnashing teeth and snarling growls until I jumped across to their ghastly ship that was covered in an oozing green mist. But I was quickly swallowed by the fog and became blind. Then, I heard a voice. At first, it sounded like a whisper, but it kept growing and growing, and I soon realized it was emanating from the darkest corners of my mind. None that enter shall ever return. I stumbled towards the source until I came to a decrepit door in the cabin. Bracing my body with my shoulder, I crashed through it, and fell to the floor. I looked up. A dark figure towered over me, with remnants of rotting flesh dangling from its bones. As it turned towards me, I expected to feel fright. But instead, I felt something else. It was calm and cold as the warmth disappeared from my body. I shudder when I think about that feeling. There is nothing human about it. Any sane man would have been overcome by horror and despair. Instead, I felt nothing. All my feelings, good and bad, had been sucked away from my body, and left in their place was just a void. A cold, empty void. Everything around me faded away. The sounds from the battle, the crashing waves, the thundering in the sky. And somehow the figure had moved right behind me. I could feel the ghastly green fog misting the back of my neck. It was brave of you to come here. 
what I really think. You can save them, Jake. You can't. I must stop the source. I struggle to get out. <laughs> I will defeat you. Something clutched at my chest, making it almost impossible to say anything else. I fell against the table, as if my body was jerked by a massive anchor. I collapsed at the figure's feet. Why are we saying that? You seem tired. Perhaps you need some rest. The sunken one who loses all will come to him. I don't remember anything after that. Just darkness. I woke up choking and coughing out seawater. And a few days later, here I am, just enjoying a nice pint of brain death rum and you sit down fantasizing about the pirate life. Here's a bit of advice, boy. Stay on land where it is safe. What is dead may never die. Jake left the table, but I remained seated. What a story. It sounded like a fairy tale, and yet his eyes spoke of the truth. Still, my mind remained unchanged. I was determined to join the pirates and uncover their secrets. Even so, I couldn't find much information on the pirates. Everyone seemed to think they were just a band of thieves, plundering towns, stealing goods, raising a ruckus at every port they passed through. But in my travels, I came across several pirate hideouts, the largest of these you've already probably heard of, Brimhaven. What drives these pirates? What are they really after? My curiosity only grew stronger after hearing Jake's story. Luckily, I came across the perfect opportunity to satisfy my interests. I found a job as a cabin boy on a ship called the Wida, where my job was to cook and clean for the captain. Soon we set sail, and I kept my ears wide open for any secrets I might uncover. I heard stories of lost treasures and giant sea creatures, large enough to devour entire ships. The man telling the story must have lost track of his prize, I assumed because of his rather poor and ugly appearance. This was not uncommon during my investigation into the truth. Pirates love to tell stories, regardless if they are true or not. First, we visited Karamja. While most of the island was inhabited by native tribes, at the northern end of it lay the small town I mentioned earlier, Brimhaven. The town appeared to be just like any other port town. But on the Wida, I now saw through this guys. Here, the pirates conducted their base of operations. When we entered the town, the crew went to a bar called the Dead Man's Chest, while the captain and I went to a restaurant called the Shrimp and Parrot. It looked very clean for a pirate hideout. Extravagant red carpets with golden trim lined the floorboards, and bouncers stood guard at the entrance. I don't believe I would have any chance of coming in here if it weren't for my position on the Wida. My captain wasn't the only one in the restaurant that day. I saw some other men who must have had a ship and crew of their own. I recognized one of them, a captain of the ship called the Stray, a small and agile ship. All the captains began to sit around the table on the right, and so I sat next to the one on the left. I pretended to read a book while these captains were exchanging stories and they forgot I was even there. I perked my ears up when one of the captains began telling a very interesting tale. I visited Corsair's Cove last week. You can't even call the inhabitants pirates. They were lying on bed crying about some curse that was laid upon them. I asked Captain Tuck what was going on. The fool, that'd be no curse. Cowards, I tell ye. A shame. Captain Talk and his crew were always some of the fiercest pirates of the Four Seas. All I felt for them was pure disgust. I watched as the other captains nodded their heads, 
Some even suggested they go visit and teach the Corsairs a lesson. Hi, laddie. Me bring you ale. I was glad the pirate captains could at least talk in normal sentences, but these lower class pirates probably never went to school. Hi, I'll take a pint of grog. And the waiter went to fetch me one. Blimey. I only caught the end of his sentence, something about the Northern Seas. I heard my captain talking about leaving. I was told to ready the crew. It was time for us to depart. Land ho! It felt like we had been sailing for weeks before we saw land. I could see my breath every time I exhaled the frozen air. A blanket of gray snow covered the land, but not all of it. Beneath the snow was a dark and scorched earth. These were lands long forgotten, resonating a dark and magical presence. I asked where we were, to which the captain replied with a single word, four and three. I didn't dare ask what we were doing here, as the captain never liked to disclose his reasons for doing something. I admired that about him. His crew loved him, and they would never betray his loyalty, despite not knowing his true intentions. We sailed past a broken ship, circling around until we pulled onto shore. The ship must have been smashed against the rocks. Perhaps it was a strong storm that ripped the ship in half, damaging it beyond repair. The captain told me to wait on the shore while he and some of the crewmates headed to a seemingly abandoned building further down the shore. I looked around and felt some of the ground beneath me. This wasn't snow, it was ash. A chill ran down my spine. What on Gilinor were we doing here? I soon got my answer. After around 20 minutes, the captain returned with all kinds of barrels and liquids. One of the crew members said, We are going to blow them sky high. Hush, said the captain. One of the crew members we called One-Eyed Crow looked at me and his face turned red. My, my apologies, captain, he said, and walked past me with the barrels. I knew they were hiding something. After the barrels were loaded up, the captain instructed me and some of the other crew members to take some food to the old looking building, and then it struck me. This building was a trading outpost. If any ship would go past, they would just see some pirates trying to survive in the wild rough terrain. But what was really going on was that these pirates were creating something in secret and selling it to other pirates. What could they be creating? Unfortunately, I had no time to learn more, as our ship began to set sail yet again. Throughout the next voyage, my curiosity ate away at me, piece by piece. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. One night, I snuck under the deck and managed to peek into one of the barrels. The substance was beyond strange to me, emitting a ghastly, dull green light. Around it was a layer of material I had never seen before. I figured it was a protective layer, preventing the substance from slipping out. I had never seen a substance like this before in my life. Part of me wanted to take some, but I was too scared to try, and I went back to the sleeping quarters. Our next destination took us to some sandy shores. I was very surprised to see that we landed on the right side of the Caridian Desert. There were no pirate settlements that I knew of, and no buildings to plunder. After getting off the ship, I saw the crew passing around water skins. The desert was a scorching and hellish place. But still, I preferred it to the frozen wasteland we had just come from. We walked for what seemed like ages beneath the sun's bright rays. Eventually, we reached a place called Shanty Pass. The captain bribed the guard stationed there to let us through. I asked why we didn't travel from Port Serum, and the crew members told me that any pirates in Port Serum would get hung from a noose. So, we take this alternative route. We went to the northern part of town to visit a merchant who sold certain rare goods. 
The man didn't look very rich, but the captain did pay him a decent sum. As they departed, they shook hands, something else I had not seen the captain do before. I wonder why. I only saw it for a moment, a faint shimmer before it was concealed in the captain's desert robes. More secrets. We headed back to the ship and set sail once again. That night, I woke up to shouting and the sound of waves crashing against the hull. I ran out onto the deck to see our ship approaching the most terrifying storm I had ever seen. Waves larger than castles swept over us while the wind whipped at my shirt. The captain stood still as a statue next to the helmsman. I saw him gazing out towards the center of the storm. His face was stoic, but his eyes, his eyes were wide with fear. In the distance, I saw an aura of green mist amidst the towering waves. Jake was right. I most definitely should have stayed ashore.